Okay, frequently asked question number two. Why did the 1611 King James Bible, why did it contain the Apocrypha? Okay. Now this is another one of the attacks that the new versionists will often come up with. They'll come out with this thing and they, they say this. And if you're new to the whole issue, you might get kind of like, oh, wow, well, that's really bad. Um, well, it would be, but, uh, you know, until you know the facts, then it's not bad. The fact of the matter is that the King James and the, the authorized version, as it was originally called, uh, was translated from 1604 to 1611. And what they did is they took the apocryphal books and they put them between the Old Testament and the New Testament for their historical quality, for, you know, just readability. People read a lot more back then than they do today. <laughs> and so it was between the New Testament and the Old Testament. See, they didn't want to put them in, interspersed with the Old Testament like Catholics Bible, like Catholic Bibles, because the reason that you know it's not legitimate is because there are no New Testament quotations from the apocryphal books. Nobody's saying in, in the New Testament, you know, as it's written in Tobit or Judith or something like this, they're not referring back to these apocryphal books. So that's why originally they had them between the Testaments. Later on, they decided to take them out, okay, just because they're not necessary. They're just, uh, um, you know, they are ancient writings in terms of going back to the probably second or third century, but they're not important, not at all important. Uh, and they definitely were not being read by Jesus and the disciples. But ironically, these same people that would use that to attack the King James Bible, it shows some ignorance and hypocrisy on their part. You see, Right here, let me just show you, this is a New American Bible, a Catholic, Roman Catholic Bible. Okay, let me zoom in here. Don't have the overhead camera right now. Okay, I don't know if you can make this out. But here you can see the list of the books there in, your, in the Old Testament. And up here you have, let me see here, the book of Sirach Ecclesiasticus right there at my finger. You know, right underneath it you have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Baruch. Baruch comes before Ezekiel. Okay. See, with a Catholic Bible... Like this one, oh, and I'll show you this too. This is interesting. I've shared this in other studies, but look at their Lord. You know, an all-seeing eye in a triangle. That's the, that's the Lord of this uh, Catholic perversion. This uh, New American Bible. Here, yeah, New American Bible up at the top. But a Catholic Bible like this thing will have the apocryphal books as part of the Old Testament. Okay, and why is that? Well, because the two quote unquote oldest and best manuscripts that the new versions rely on, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, some say Sinaiticus, however you want to say it, codices B and LF, those two manuscripts actually have apocryphal books as part of the inspired text. So, again, this shows the real hypocrisy of those that defend the new versions because they say, well, the American Standard, New American Standard Version is the best translation of the Greek or the English Standard Version. They're always claiming that they're the best translation. But the funny thing is, if they would truly translate Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, it would come out looking like this, the New American Bible. And of course, they don't want to do that, at least not yet. You know, there are quote-unquote Protestant uh, Bible versions out there, like the New Revised Standard Version, uh, that they're actually including the uh, apocryphal books. The, they call them deuterocanonical books. And they're actually starting to put them in now. So, and uh, there's a, uh, I think that uh, the Shepherd of Hermas and the Epistle of Barnabas, I think are two ones that are actually in the Sinaiticus manuscript that are in the New Testament. And uh, so, you know, the Catholics don't even put all that stuff in yet. But they probably will eventually. So, uh, why did they include the apocryphal books as part of the 1611 Bible? Well, for their historical quality. And later on, the Lord led them to take those books out. 
Uh, again, not a problem for the King James Bible translators because they were clearly saying the apocryphal books are right here. You can read them if you want to. If not, you don't have to. But we're just putting them between the Testaments, not interspersed like the Catholics do. Put them between the Testaments for their historical value. And later they took them out. But the new versions that rely on these uh, pagan Alexandrian Greek manuscripts that the Vatican uses, uh, they're actually not translating their text because they don't put the apocryphal books in the Old Testament as part of the Old Testament, like their manuscripts do. So, again, the hypocrisy of the new version crowd. Don't let them mess you up. 